What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Things just keep getting worse the more we find out. Uh, the more we look into things, things just keep getting more mind-bogglingly bad, uh, including a new revelation yesterday via Dan Bongino, which I covered in either this video or another video. I can't remember which order I'm going to be scheduling them for because I'm headed down to the RNC. Hopefully there's no more dudes with AKs and ski masks. But I digress. Uh, things we went from oh the roof was too sloped and to Dan Bongino saying actually by the way Dan Bongino's former Secret Service he has many connections to Dan Bongino saying uh, actually uh, my sources say that there should have been someone on that roof. Then the Secret Service comes out and says well uh, yeah maybe uh, I don't know uh, what literally what. And then this revelation that the dude literally locked eyes with counter snipers before the rally. Like you're remember, it's your job. You're like staring down scope, you're scoping the area, and you see this kid looking right back at you with a rangefinder. Nobody says anything. It's my opinion with zero evidence. That this is had to have been some sort of inside job. I can't prove that. It's just my opinion. Just my opinion. But the amount of failures, imagine your job is to, you know, especially like a rangefinder. Okay. Like I get that, like a normie might not know what that is. They're like, oh, that's a funny looking monocle or a binocular, you know? But somebody whose job it is, who is a sniper knows exactly what that is and knows exactly what it's for. You use it to line up your shot to figure out how far you know your your how far you need to aim over the target, under the target, whatever the case may be. Generally, you would never aim under the target, but you get what I'm saying. Almost never. Let's start with all this stuff, okay? Twenty six minutes. That's how long Thomas. Uh, I don't like to say his name. I, I'm going to be better about that. Was missing before he got into position. You know, even though the Secret Service director said it was a rapid succession of events, it wasn't rapid. It was 30 minutes long. This just in, he locked eyes with counter snipers before the rally from inside the secure areas. Let me say this. This means two things. One, they allowed him in with a rangefinder, which again, why would you need that device? Even if you had some sort of clever excuse that would just be on the ban list. Why do you need to know? You don't need that at this event. You're here to support the, you know, the nominee presumptive president of the United States. What do you need a range finder for? Get out of here, kid. Also, you look like a weirdo South Park kid. You know what? You're not even allowed back in. I don't like the look of you. According to CNN, the loser and the counter losers <laughs> were looking at each other through his range finder and through their scopes. Earlier that so you're on you're on the roof, you're looking down at at the at him. You see he's looking back at you with a range finder. First of all, you'd be forgiven for taking that shot. I would have forgiven you. I would have forgiven you. Should have known better to bring that in and be and spotting, you know, spotting security. Is that mean? Is that too far? I don't think so. Maybe it is a week ago. You would have been forgiven, in my opinion, if you're that guy and you just pull the trigger right there. Can't do it. Way too The risk is way too high. You you accept that risk when you go in there and you, you know that Donald J. Trump's going to be on the stage. You're in there like a dork with a rangefinder eyeballing um, security. I wouldn't have cared. I would have called him. It, it would have been a literal Darwin Award. Earlier that week, he went to his work and requested to have Saturday off. He told them that he'd be back on Sunday. He said, I have something important to do. I'll be back Sunday, he reportedly said. Let's not forget the fact that he had some sort of report, remote detonation device in his, in his car. For a kid with no search engine history, no search history on his phone, nothing in his room, he sure was able to do a lot of research. It's almost as if, well... I won't say that. The thing is, uh, it's entirely possible he had like a different laptop that he used for that and it's hidden in a secure area that no one knows. Um, 
But you know, there are other ways. Like Google themselves should have access to his search history. Like there's something there if you're actually Google um, to be able to look at. Um, there, there's all sorts of other stuff. His phone was completely empty. What? Even if he scrubbed all his data, right? You're planning on it. Okay, I'm scrubbing. I'm reformatting my hard drive. You can also send those hard drives out for data recovery. And as long as that spot of the hard drive hasn't been rewritten, you can pull the data off it. Now, I don't know if that's true for SSD. Maybe that's not true for the new ones. I used to repair computers back when it was not solid state drives. So maybe that's not true for solid state. But it used to be true for the other, the old style um, hard drives. I mean, a 20 year old, like nothing adds up. People are obviously saying that he, that he didn't act alone. So exactly how do they know they locked eyes with the team? It would have seemed like they're getting details that make no sense that they should have. And this video, obviously, it is impossible to overstate how much of a miracle we experienced on July 13th. This is how close we came. I can't stop watching. And I can't either. This is a wireframe of Trump's head. I'm sure you've seen it if you're on X. But this is how close, this is the trajectory. You see the trajectory of the bullet right here went right in his eye socket, basically. A near perfect shot. Okay. Take a look what happened. Just turned his head as, so like he looks at the chart and look at this. There it grazes his ear, you see? But like, he didn't even hear, like he probably hadn't even heard the sound yet. He would just happen to turn his head right here. He's perfect, perfect. And he just kind of tilts his head back and it misses him by like, I mean, it is, we are that close from this country completely falling apart. Let me play that one more time. It's so, it's like mesmerizing. Take a look what happened. Is that second shot on there too? Yeah, there's, so is, he stayed on target that second shot. Uh, no, is that the first one? There's the first one. He moves his head. And there's the second one. So he fired twice. And he missed both times by almost nothing. I had to awkwardly insert this additional part. Oh, by the way, uh, his parents, the kid's parents, called law enforcement the day of the event and let them know. Uh, that something was up and that he took all these, uh, took every took everything from their house. Check this out. Meant to report that Crooks was missing. And we're now told they eventually called law enforcement His parents. to report that Crooks was missing. And they were worried. And they also were told those parents uh, are now being cooperative now. I mean, like, there's a lot to talk about right here. It's probably whole enough for another video. Parents don't call the PD when a 20-year-old is, quote, missing for a few hours unless the weapons were also missing and the 20-year-old had mental illness. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, give me a freaking break with this. Now, I don't know when they called. Did they call before, after, whatever? I'm not sure about that timeline, but I'm going to be investigating that today too. Now, look at this. Secret Service spotted him at the rally three hours before. So first, it was two minutes. First, the first, let me just take you through the, the trickle of information. Not, and in a week from now at this rate, we're going to know that he was at their company picnic. You know, like at this rate, it went from, oh, an officer happened to confront him seconds before, but happened to not be armed. No one's asking why a, a police officer was unarmed. That's a lie, in my opinion. Then it was, it was two minutes from the time they spotted him to when, you know, this. Then it was like three or four minutes when we saw the BBC interview where people were literally saying, there's someone on the roof, there's someone on the roof, there's someone on the roof. That was three to four minutes ahead of time. Nothing. Nobody shows up, nothing. And, and again, most importantly, nobody takes Trump off the stage. Nobody. If they had just taken Trump off the stage at that point, just as an abundance of caution, they would have arrested this guy, probably taken him alive, maybe, and we'd know a lot more. But well, we didn't get that, did we? 
around 3 p.m. on Saturday, he was spotted at the rally security screening area and tried to pass through metal detectors with a rangefinder, which is used by um, people who want to, you know, people who are shooters to, to measure distance. The device, which looks like a small pair of binoculars, would have not would not have prevented him from getting into the rally, but it did put him on law enforcement's radar. Secret Service watched him, but lost track of him when he left the secure area. He uh, he believed to have collected he been I guess believed to have collected his rifle from his car, which also contained a bulletproof vest, which he I don't think was wearing. I don't know. And two different things that go boom. About 40 minutes before he was back on their radar, a photograph showing the 20-year-old appearing to crawl on the ground while scouring the area was circulated to law enforcement at a, as a suspicious sighting at 5.30 p.m. Again, at no point have they said, nah, players, we're done. Like, we're good. We're done. Get out. At minimum, just say, like, dude, you're looking too weird. Sorry. Get out. Get out, and we're going to follow you home, and we're going to search your car. Nothing wrong with that. Would have been totally fine by me. At 6.11, Crooks took up a position on the slanted roof and did what he did. Witnesses spotted him, also spotted, uh, spotted him crawling around on the roof much before that. A Secret Service countersniper team named Hawkeye also spotted him looking at their position through the rangefinder. I mean, what is going on here? How can you look? I don't know. I can't know that. I can't know everything. Here's his little remote. I think his remote detonator right here. Looks like a garage opener. This would not have worked at that distance. This looks like it's infrared. But, you know, where did he buy this stuff? How did he figure out how to make this stuff? Who, you know, who helped him? Was it an internet forum? Was it a somebody helped him? You don't just figure this stuff out on your own, right? You don't just figure this stuff out on your own. I mean, people think, oh, he was a loner and he was nice. Here's what I'll say. You know, I'm not trying to get banned or anything, okay? It is my opinion that he is and was not a loner. And I guess I'll leave it at that. I, I don't know what else I can possibly say. Like, I don't think... That this guy acted alone. I don't think he just happened to figure out all this stuff out alone. I don't think that he didn't research this stuff deeply and often. I don't believe. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. The way everybody's acting after the fact makes me double not believe it. You see people saying the father, the the kid's father was a behavioral therapist. The mother was also in the similar field. Say it with me, MK. I mean, that's what people are saying. You know. I don't know much about that. Luke knows more about it, and he was telling me a little bit about it. But, man, this thing just keeps getting worse by the day. And I'll keep reporting on it. Hopefully, um, you'll uh, keep tuning in right here. Make sure you subscribe or follow. And um, we'll talk to you again real soon.